Hey, today is Monday, March 11th, and we're going to combine two math lessons today. We're doing Eureka Math 4.22 and 4.23 because both lessons have the same learning goal. They just add on to each other, so I think we can do them all in one day, okay? Today, in both lessons, the learning goal is I can compare the size of the product to the size of the factors. So I want to look at what I multiplied and see how those factors, A times B, for instance, how it compares to the, the, fact, the product, the answer, C. Does that make sense? Okay, so in a multiplication problem, if I have two numbers, A times B, A and B could be any numbers, yes? Equals C. I want to see how big this is compared to the factors. Make sense? Okay, very good. Okay, what is a factor and what is a product? Well, as we know, again, as I was saying earlier, if we have A times B equals C, what letters are factors? Everyone? A and B. Okay. What letter is the product? C. Okay. So today we're comparing how big the product is compared to the factors. How does multiplying two factors affect the size of the product? Like if I multiply two numbers, how does that affect the size of the product? Is it going to get bigger? Is it going to get smaller? Go ahead and have that discussion at your table groups. What happens to numbers when you multiply? Here we can see three multiplication problems. Go ahead and write them down in your notebook. In these three multiplication problems, we can see that we have, we're always multiplying two factors. In the first one, 4 fourths times 12 inches, one factor is 4 fourths, and the second factor is 12 inches. In the second multiplication problem, 3 fourths times 12 inches, one factor is 3 fourths, and one factor is 12 inches. What is one factor in the last multiplication problem, everyone? 5 fourths, and then the other factor is 12 inches. Now, each of these multiplication problems has two factors, but one factor is what we're going to be calling the scaling factor. A scaling factor is one of the factors that makes the other factor either bigger or smaller. When you scale something, you make it bigger or smaller. Think about a map. When I'm drawing a map of the world, can I, do I draw everything to the right actual size? No, I make it smaller. And then you have that little bar that tells you the scale and tells you this much represents 1,600 kilometers or whatever, right? So that a scaling, when you scale something, you make it bigger or smaller. So I want everyone to write down the definition in their notebooks. A scaling factor is a factor that makes the other factor bigger or smaller. In my first example here, 4 fourths is my scaling factor, 3 fourths is also my scaling factor, and 5 fourths is also my scaling factor because these factors are making 12 inches either bigger or smaller or staying the same. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let's find out how these scaling factors, and I'm going to circle, so go ahead and now circle the scaling factors and underline the number of inches. Now let's find out how these scaling factors actually affect the 12 inches of string that I have by doing the multiplication. Now that we've done the multiplication, let's look at how those scaling factors affected the answers or affected the products. When I had a scaling factor of 4 fourths, how did it change the size of the factor from 12 inches? It changed it to 12 inches. So how did it change? It didn't change. Okay. In the second multiplication problem, when my scaling factor was 3 fourths, I started with 12 inches, but I ended up with only 9 inches. So how did the scaling factor of 3 fourths affect the size of the other factor? It made it smaller. smaller. In the last one, I had 5 fourths as my scaling factor. I started out with 12 inches of string, but after I scaled it, I ended up with 15 inches of string. So how does the product compare to the size of 12 inches? It got bigger. bigger. Interesting. When you look at these three multiplication problems, we see lots of factors, right? We see pairs of factors, 4 fourths times 1 third, 3 fourths times 1 third, and 5 fourths times 1 third. My first question to you then is which one in each problem is the scaling factor and which one's the same? Well, in order to figure out what the scaling factor is, we have to look at which factor is the same between all three problems. What factor is the same in all three problems? One third. So that means that four fourths must be the scaling factor. Go ahead and circle that. Three fourths must be the scaling factor. And five fourths must be the scaling factor. Go ahead and underline the factor that's not the scaling factor. One third, one third, and one third. Because what we're going to do is we're going to compare to see how the scaling factor changes the size of the other factor in the product. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Based upon your previous 
um, observations that you wrote down. How do you think the scaling factor of four fourths will affect one third? It will keep one third the same. same. Okay, let's multiply and see. Four times one all over four times three. Well, these two can be simplified. So I have one times one over one times three, which is one third. Did it stay the same? It did. That's what we predicted. Based on your previous observations, how do you think the scaling factor of three-fourths will change the size of one-third? It will make one-third smaller. Let's see if that's the case. We have three times one all over four times three. Three and three can both be divided by three, so I have one times one over four times one, which is one-fourth. Is one-fourth smaller than one-third? Yes. Okay, interesting. So the scaling product, the scaling factor of three-fourths made the other factor smaller, made the product smaller than the other factor. Interesting. Based on your previous observation, how do you think the scaling factor of five-fourths will affect one-third? It'll make it bigger. Okay, let's see. We have five times one over four times three. This time we don't have any common factors. So we have five-twelfths. Is five-twelfths bigger than one-third? How do we know? Because one-third, actually I shouldn't write it like that. That's not accurate. We can write it like this though. One-third it's the same as how many twelfths? Four twelfths. So five twelfths is bigger than four twelfths, so it did make it bigger. So what do you notice? How come the first one's keeping it the same? Four fourths, the scaling factor's keeping it the same. Well, because four fourths is the same as? Okay, so when the scaling factor is one, it keeps the product the same size as the other factor. What about three fourths? It made it smaller. What do we notice about the scaling factor of three fourths? Well, it's less than one. And when it's less than one, when your scaling factor is less than one, it makes the product smaller than the other factor was. See that? What about five-fourths? Five-fourths, isn't that an improper fraction? So that means that it's greater than one, isn't it? Because five-fourths is the same as one and one-fourth. Do you agree? And when it's greater than one, it seems to make the product bigger than the other factor. Hmm, interesting. We need to compare the product of 19.4 times 0 0.96 compared to 19.4 times 0 0.02. First of all, which one is the scaling factor? Well, we can figure that out by figuring out which factor is the same. Which factor is the same between the two problems? 19. So I'm going to underline that. That means that 0 0.96 is one scaling factor and 0 0.02 is another scaling factor. I'm going to take 0 0.02. Wait, so Martha's looking at me like I'm really confused. This is different than the previous problems we did, huh? What's different about it? It's decimals. Can we write it using fractions? Yes. Everyone say this using words. 19 and? So is that 19 and 4 tenths? Right? Okay, everyone say this one using words. Oh, so that's the same thing as multiplied by 96 hundredths. Okay, down here we have 19 and 4 tenths again. And then times how many hundredths this time? Okay, so let's now underline our regular factor and circle our scaling factor. If our scaling factor is 96 hundredths, how does that compare to 1? It's less than 1. So will the product of 19 and 4 tenths times 96 hundredths be more or less than 19 and 4 tenths? Less. Less, okay. What about this scaling factor, two hundredths? Is that more or less than one? Less. Less. So the product of 19 and 4 tenths times two hundredths, will that be more or less than 19 and 4 tenths? So both of these are going to end up being less than our original number, 19 and 4 tenths. Which one will be bigger, though? Well, if I'm taking, this is almost one, isn't it? So this one will be bigger than this one. So our answer, we can compare. We can say 19.4 times 0 0.96 will be greater than 19.4 times 0 0.02. So what Akil was getting at, that the bigger the scaling factor, the bigger the product will be, that is not wrong. That was correct, right? Do you see how the scaling factor is bigger? So the product will be bigger. Just if you think about it logically in your head, it will make sense. But what I wanted you to get at earlier was thinking about the relationship of the scaling factor to one. Make sense? Question is asking us who spent the most money and who spent the least money. 
So we know Vald spent a certain amount. We don't know how much, but he spent all of his money. So we'll just call his amount V, right? We know that Pamela spent two-thirds as much as Vald. So is that two-thirds of Vald, which is two-thirds times V? Yes? Do you guys agree? And then Eli spent four-thirds as much as V. Go ahead and circle the scaling factors. What's Pamela's scaling factor? Two-thirds. What's Eli's scaling factor? We can see that this Pamela's scaling factor of two-thirds is less than one, and Eli's scaling factor of four-thirds is greater than one. So did Pamela spend more or less than Vald? Yes. Okay. Did Eli spend more or less than Vald? More, because four-thirds, the scaling factor is greater than one. So who spent the most? Okay, most is Eli. Who spent the least? Yeah, and least was Pamela because Vald was right in the middle. Does that make sense? Very good. So again, this is how you can use your knowledge of scaling factors to help you solve word problems.